It's football time. Today's show is jam-packed. Start to the week, all the matchups, tons of news, never not working. You don't want to miss today's show. Enjoy. Today's show is sponsored by Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology. Regular use of Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield provides a continuous invisible shield of protection against dandruff, itch, and dryness, renewing your protection with every wash. Get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working with Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology, available at walmart.com. We also want to thank SeatGeek, longtime partners of the show. Look, you can go out and you can buy tickets, and sometimes it feels like ticketing websites make getting to the event difficult on purpose. Uh, They're antiquated. They don't work. They're not like SeatGeek. They're too big. They don't care about the customer experience. And uh, look, we have the SeatGeek app on our phones. We've had it for years. It's the only way we buy tickets. It's the only way we go to games locally, the Cardinals games. Out here, we use SeatGeek. We bought, I bought tickets to go to the Christmas game with my son. I bought it on SeatGeek. Merry Christmas to you, good yeah, sir. Yeah, it's going to be fun. And they have 50,000 five-star reviews. It's not just Andy telling you that it's a great app and a great experience. They make it all super simple. Don't worry. We got the hookup if you want to get in on SeatGeek. Use the code FOOTBALLERS for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code FOOTBALLERS. Visit SeatGeek.com or download the SeatGeek app today. Use the code FOOTBALLERS for $20 off your first SeatGeek order at SeatGeek.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's football time! Yes! Yes! Oh, oh, oh. oh yeah, baby! <laughs> yeah, the producers got in on that one. We did it. Oh, by we doing something. I mean, we just survived. The calendar uh, moved forward. <laughs> Time just kept moving, but we're here, baby. But here's the coolest part. I know that the five of us in this room were not the only ones oh, singing no. it's football time. The Foot Clan were along for that ride, and it is football time. <laughs> it's Oof. so exciting. You know what I didn't consider? If enough people are listening to this podcast, if they started at the same exact moment right. and they all scream, it's football time, it might be strong enough to push the earth slightly out of orbit. I was thinking we may the have same just, thing. We might have just doomed humanity. The axis is slightly yes. off. So huh. I apologize. I didn't know to you the could world. do that, but well, football time is strong. With enough <laughs> listeners, today's show it's, it's the propulsion of the voice. Oh we all my just gosh. we just slightly push the earth. No, it's scientific. Yes, yes. I agree. Don't don't look into it. Uh, <laughs> uh, Harvard graduate, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, today's show is exciting it's jam-packed our starts of the week on today's episode we're getting into the forecast breaking down the matchups for week one we've got news to talk about we have never not working we've got the boom boom kicker oh yeah feels like a mega was that an oh yeah for the boom boom oh yeah we're I ready we're that starting means his hot? rhyme is ready that is what it means get <laughs> ready <laughs> get ready because you're ready that's right Oh, my goodness. The website, it switched over for week one. The start sit tool is available, thefantasyfootballers.com. Tons of articles each and every week, getting you primed, getting you ready, helping you get the uh, get the advantage over those dastardly, ugly oh. league mates of yours. Dastardly. That's a yeah. great word. Yeah, I tried it out. A little snidely whiplash. That's right. Twitter at the FF Ballers, the community at jointhefoot.com. Let's get the show on the road. Never Not Working. Presented by Head & Shoulders, Scalp Shield Technology. Available at Walmart. This is going to be a very exciting segment, as it is every week, trying to give you the advantage you need to guarantee success. Every fantasy player needs to be Never Not Working, needs to be doing a little extra. Jason, take it away. 
Well, we are heading into week one, and rookies are exciting, and rookie wide receivers are all the rage. Rookie fever. And now it's a question of, yeah, but are they? And mm -hmm. and how do we know? When do we pounce? Who can we trust? And so we took a look at kind of the ADP since 2014 of all these rookie wide receivers. Once the, the ADP's kind of concluded and we know exactly where they went. Average draft position. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and how they turned out relative, you know, their fantasy finish versus their wide receiver position that they were drafted in. Mm -hmm. Who hits, where they hit, where they don't, and then maybe some things to look for early on in the season. One of the things that stood out to me was just remembering that Tyreek Hill and Juju Smith-Schuster and A.J. Brown and Terry McLaurin and Chase Claypool, these great rookie seasons, were all undrafted. Okay, so, yes. so when this week one happens – uh, Interesting. Yeah, exactly. We it it's not necessarily Jamar Chase. In fact, that's one of the bad news, which to me is good news. Um, the the wide receivers who have been drafted seventh round or earlier, pretty much have not hit at all. Um, the only one who returned just close to value was Amari Cooper, uh, back in 2015. That one is not good. Um, but the wide receivers drafted in the kind of mid-late rounds, around seven through nine, had a pretty solid success rate on the season this year. That would be Devontae Smith. That could be Jalen Waddell. Um, sure. Looking at kind of the, the things to look for, guys that stand alone and project to be a, a large market share, I would say that the rookie to uh, you know be the most confident in going in this year to beat their average draft position would be Devontae Smith. Um, also, this this doesn't necessarily apply to this season, but one of the craziest things, it's it's a really small sample, but w w <laughs> rookie wide receivers drafted in the 10th round, if there happens to be one in the draft, right. the, they all fail. I mean, like universally. Give, give us an example. Like Devontae Parker, Jalen Rager, Corey Davis, Corey Coleman, um, and Tajay Sharp were all these wow. rookies who just sucked. Um, yeah, not only did they not return value, they returned a very negative value. Uh, the 10th round frown. Ex yeah, the 10th round frown, as we've always said. But so, then you get to the 11th round and you turn that frown upside down. Yeah, and once... <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, 11th heaven. Once you are... <laughs> <laughs> the show is off what, to I a don't it's we a are great all, start. First, we're all hyped. We're yeah. all ready to go. We, we're on our B game. <laughs> so we want to know, okay, we've, we've got that information, but that's done. Week one happens. How long do you hold on to these wide receivers? Um, and here's some things that you want to uh, look for. Sam Hoppin of 4-4 did a study that averaging over 36 receiving yards per game and seeing 21% of the team's air yards. That's something to look for. That's something to look for. We'll, we'll look for that and relay that information um, going forward. Uh, but my, my big takeaways are, you know, look at the late round and undrafted wide receivers who have a large percentage of routes targeted. We talked about this last week. If they're running a route, mm -hmm. are they targeted? When we see that, because that doesn't necessarily mean they had a good fantasy week, week one, week two. Right. But it means that they were involved when they were on the field. We will tell you about those players. We will target those players. And also, Devontae Smith is going to be great. I have been rising on him. And I do wonder if there's a blind spot for Jalen Waddle in general. I mean, you draft a player at, with that draft capital, you're going to use him in the offense, right? And I think because the wide receiver core in Miami is so kind of discombobulated, right? Like, what is right. Devontae Parker now? And then you have the missing week one, so you don't get to see where Will Fuller is in this offense. Uh, it gets a little bit confusing, and sometimes the murkiness is what drives that average draft position to no man's land. And, like, Jalen Waddle is certainly a candidate for a breakout season if they involve him the way that they should involve a – a uh, top 10 pick, right? Mm -hmm. All right, let's uh, move forward. A reminder, get up to 100% dandruff protection. That's never not working with head and shoulder scalp shield technology available at walmart.com. News and notes from around the league presented by Sleeper. So... Mm. We were live on Spotify Green Room yesterday afternoon, and I'm fairly. Oh, it was delightful. It, well, it was it was great. Uh, it's always a good time, hanging out, chatting. Austin Eckler, that name was just 
in all caps typed in the chat for an hour. Uh, people want to know what's going to happen. What do they do? Non-participant on Wednesday, it's been revealed that it was a hamstring injury. A, camp, a hamstring at yeah. the very last moment in time. Are you concerned? Who do you pick up? How are you feeling about old, awesome, excellent? Yeah, I mean, you have to be concerned. Um, this is a little bit too early for us to have great insight and great medical knowledge. I have not seen a report that specifies the greater anything of that it nature. Could, it just popped up. Right. Yesterday. It, it, this was this was uh, last evening. We found out about it. Um, it, it. It's possible this could be nothing. He plays Sunday and everything is good. But, I mean, that's just not what usually happens with a hamstring injury. Um, it doesn't just disappear in a second. Uh, if you pull your hamstring, you've got to have rest. And so, at the very least right now, you need to be targeting the backups. There is, uh, There's two guys there. I do not believe in Joshua Kelly as a talent. Um, so, if you are going to be targeting someone, uh, I think you should be targeting uh, Justin Jackson. You agree, Mike? I do. Justin Jackson, yes. We, we, he has he's been that guy, you know, several times for this team. I get that you know, we have a new coaching staff and so maybe they have a different take on it. Maybe they really like Joshua Kelly, but it's hard to imagine the the new regime just throwing out all the tape of Justin Jackson who's uh, he Justin has more Jackson's, juice than Kelly does. He's more versatile. Yeah, Jackson's a good player. He's not better than Austin Eckler, but he's a he is a very competent replacement. They have dealt with so many injuries in that backfield over the last couple of years. And last year, uh, I was trying to remember. You know, when, when Eckler missed all that time, I mean, it was it was a knee hamstring issue for him where he missed the the five or six games, whatever it was. It's one of the reasons I don't have muscles i know that the that's true the damage you can't get hurt if you have no muscles no i mean you see this we've seen the flexes huh, what is dead may never die maybe stop <laughs> maybe stop flexing everything yeah um and also uh we're not to the starts of the week yet and this guy probably couldn't be in there because it's too obvious but uh go ahead and fire up your keenan allen uh mm, good call good call <laughs> thank you chris godwin left off the injury report uh we said it yesterday i didn't think you know, Godwin or Brown was anything to be concerned about. You mm -hmm. had a, you know, a Thursday night game. Clyde Edwards-Alaire is practicing in full. Curtis Samuel, this one is not great. Pulled no. up, pulled up during a route. Um, he doesn't feel right. It's been a long time. It's not like Curtis Samuel was out there two weeks ago, three weeks ago. It's been a, a long time since we've seen Curtis Samuel. You know, we were talking about, oh, he'll be, you know, he knows the offense, so he can just acclimate the second he's healthy. Well, he's not healthy. Yeah, and and that's the issue. Is is it's official? I mean, it's done. He is absolutely not healthy. This is a guy I was high on. I I talked him up uh, just a couple of weeks ago. I I've drafted him everywhere. I've got him in our family league. I've got him in our uh, our league of record. I think I've got him. Oh no, I got sniped in the listener league. Ha! Yes. <laughs> loser. Um, <laughs> but the reality is, he's had so much time to rest and recover. The fact that the right when he gets back. It is immediately a problem again. Says that this is going to be. He's I not going to play week this. one. He's not. I. I think this could go several weeks. I think this could be something that turns into a core muscle surgery situation. Um, he is bodied now in my rankings, and I. I've tried to make trade offers. You know, for the hopeful upside because. Uh, you know, we're not doctors. We don't know. Maybe he is. Maybe he needs one more week of rest and gets back out there. But I am completely 100 um, percent pessimistic on the outlook of Curtis Samuel. So Logan Thomas gets a bump. Logan Thomas and third round rookie Deami Brown, I think, is worth a speculative ad. Throw him on the back of the bench. Yeah, I mean, if Jason's right, which I, I tend to agree that there's a chance that this lingers for a really long time into surgery. When I hear it doesn't quite feel right after this amount of time. When you saw the video, like it, it just happened to be captured, him running the route, and he pulls up, and you could see in his face, like this is a man who knows that he's not going to be playing he's football. He's on a road. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just throwing this out there for week one, players that are not on the injury report that may have popped up during the offseason, Daryl Henderson, Justin Jefferson, Tyler Lockett, Julio Jones, uh, A.J. Brown missed practice, but it was just rest. D.J. Chark, Marvin Jones both playing. Traquan Smith, Adam Troutman both Wait, playing. what? Yeah. 
What? Adam, Adam Troutman? What? Not on the injury report? Oh, it's you, a football day miracle. Do you want to take away your Juwan Johnson uh, undrafted jam? <laughs> I, I think that Johnson's still worth a speculative ad in deeper leagues, but this is this is incredible news, fellas. Why did no one share this with me earlier? We've been trying to keep it from you. Yeah, yeah. clearly. Yeah, it's been really uh, – both producers didn't want to let you know. Can I? We know, we know how you get when Troutman's ready to but go. But can I go back and change my my guys? Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. You yeah, can, yeah, you can make we're fine with guy. that. I mean, Adam Troutman's in. <laughs> I don't think you want to do that. Man. No, no. But, uh, but this that's awesome. That's great. I'm not sure Troutman wants you to do that. <laughs> He's already overcome one in, micro right caused injury. Uh, one one injury that seems to be healed is Hunter Henry. I mean, he's back. So that's interesting with your John U week one. It's mm -hmm. interesting because, you know, Henry last year is 600 plus yards at the tight end position. Very valuable. Um, Ramondre Stevenson's okay as well. Anything new, Brooks, that broke over the last five minutes? No, sir. All right. You feel free to hop on the mic and break in if something happens, okay? You got it. Be bold. Be strong. Uh, that was today's news and notes brought to you by Sleeper. Hop over there on the Sleeper app. Get the breaking news. Something happens and you don't have Brooks sitting close to you yeah. to tell you what's going on. You hear that sound and you know what to do. And if you've got open waivers or, uh, you know, you can act. You mm -hmm. can act quickly. It's time for matchups. I'm go. really excited. Fantasy Forecast. did it big breath we got to the football season we did talk through the cowboys buccaneers matchup on yesterday's show so if you want to hear that matchup breakdown uh jason's got a, a just a smile that yeah i'm that <laughs> i hope we're looking at the same thing <laughs> uh well it, it started with the drop uh -huh. and just realizing we're in the fantasy forecast but then it was really taken over the top by dean peace yeah so <laughs> we have a note here from uh our editor in chief the Borg gogan who is a, a falcon's homer but he just wanted to remind us that about the defensive coordinator dean pease with the the important note of he also poops it's he does true. both he does both and that's what you want in a defensive coordinator and this is great foreshadowing for the atlanta falcons oh no is it it yeah. sure is well let me lay it out here and we'll talk about the matchup eagles traveling to atlanta to take on the falcons the DraftKings sportsbook line for this game it's Falcons minus three. The over-under is 49 points. Battle of the Birds. Two bad defenses. Two offenses we like for fantasy in a dome in Atlanta. I like this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this game, and I'm just glancing at it. Starts the week is, is coming up, but there's three of them in this game. You've got a couple of quarterbacks that are, you know, if you drafted somebody that you are waiting on, both Matt Ryan and Jalen Hurts, the wheels up Look, right yeah they are both absolutely in play it is indoors we know that if things are just a little bit faster in Atlanta Matt Ryan uh, kills the yardage uh, when he's playing at home and you have entering the season two of the worst secondaries in football as graded out by pro football focus I mean we're sitting at a 49 point over under this game ha is a powder cake that could turn into uh, just fantasy points a palooza uh, if this turns into a shootout, which I I would be shocked if it doesn't. Me too. I, w I was actually surprised to see the line at 49 points. I, I would expect this to be a an over 50 matchup. That's that's I don't think either of these defenses can stop either of these offenses. Right. Um, so I, I do want players in this game. There are very few options that I would say. like for instance I, I've been going back and forth uh because of my Curtis Samuel injury on on even Jalen Rager versus some other you know T Terrace Marshall or sure I, I am I'm not calling a shot here that Jalen Rager is going to be special but <laughs> it's it's a pretty good matchup for um you know week one Jalen Hurts and Devontae Smith and Jalen Rager so I who are we not liking in this matchup not liking in this matchup uh i don't you know i think the tight end situation for philadelphia is still a mixed bag of like not knowing 
whether Zach Ertz or Dallas Goddard is a more viable start. They're think, both in play. They're probably both in play, but that, that also just – it's just not the most comfortable situation. Correct. So I guess that one stands out. Um, right now, Mike Davis should get all the work for Atlanta or the majority of it. Miles Sanders, love him this week. So both of the – I was going to say, Miles Sanders is it, – he's – you're playing him as a running back too. But fantasy points against last year, the Falcons were not terrible because – not not because they were a great defense against the run, but because you ran through the air when you played against the Atlanta Falcons. You didn't need to run, and that's not Miles Sanders' job, I don't believe, anymore. I think that Boston Scott and the rookie Kenneth Gainwell will, will be the the primary pass catchers at the running back position for the Falcons. Yeah, and we'll see how much the rushing uh, volume of Jalen Hurts impacts sure. the screen game in general. For these two teams, I also I think it's a good overview thing to say these powder keg games, these potential fantasy point bonanzas, are prime for week one overreactions too. Because if some of these players have huge weeks, maybe it's a Miles Sanders, maybe it's a Jalen Rager, maybe it's a Russell Gage, maybe it's a Kyle Pitts. Yeah, maybe it's a Kyle Pitts. <laughs> J- uh, Jason is fully clenched. <laughs> he knows what's about to happen. Up. I do. I know what's about to happen. And <laughs> what I, if, I know what's about to happen this week and this season, and it's unfair. <laughs> and this season. So we've we've reached that point too? Well, I, I think he's going to get off. I think Kyle Pitts is going to get off to a strong start. I mean, you can't ask for a much better matchup than this. Um, week one at home against not a great secondary, yeah. uh, possibly missing, um, you know, your, your main safety. So... <sighs> Yeah, Calvin Ridley and Devonta Smith. Devonta Smith should have an opportunity to get off yes. to a great start as well. And Ridley is our wide receiver three on the week. So I think you weren't going to sit Calvin Ridley. No, I think Smith and Russell Gage are the biggest questions, right? Those are the guys that are actually decisions for people to make because where they were drafted, they might have other players. And I, I am playing Devonta Smith. Yes, yeah. 100%. Devontae so is Smith. Mike in our league of record, I believe. Yes. Uh, so, I mean, the the question is, like, do you go Devontae Smith or – I'm trying to pull up a – Different name. Yeah, like, uh, Devontae Smith or – What about Beckham? Oh, I'd play Smith easily. But, you're like, Devontae Smith or LaVisca Chenault versus Smith, Houston. Devontae. Yeah, I would play Chenault. Uh, Devontae Smith or Jerry Judy against the New York Giants. I want to retract my Chenault over Smith comment. You'd go Can Chenault? Can we go back in time? Sure. <laughs> it wasn't that long ago. Uh, so yeah, I'd go Smith. I would go Smith on, on both of those. Okay. All right, before we get into our next matchup, we want to thank today's sponsor, Fight Camp. Have you ever wanted to learn how to box or kickbox from real fighters? Fight Camp has you covered. You want to get your kids involved in a fitness journey with you. Cou- you can't be the couch potato kids. You got to get up. You got to start hitting the bag. With fight camp, boom, boom, pow, pow. fight. Well, that sounded like a gun. Hold on, <laughs> pow, pow, pow. That was the that old better? school Indiana Jones punch it was. sound effect. Yeah. Fight camp brings the boxing and kickboxing gym right to your home with full body workouts that you'll actually look forward to. A freestanding punching bag that can take your hardest hits. It's made for beginners, and it's also made for experienced boxers who want to box at home. With new content being released weekly for uh, from easy to advanced. Learn from six highly qualified trainers, all with real fight experience, ranging from a pro MMA fighter, mother of two, to a kickboxing champion. They use the they use brand new tech that tracks each punch you throw. They're going to measure your speed, your volume, your output. It's a tremendous way to work on your fitness. And right now, you can pay for your fight camp over 24 months for less than the cost of a boxing gym and get it right away. Plus, fight camp offers free shipping. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, just go to joinfightcamp.com slash footballers to get free shipping on Fight Camp. Go to joinfightcamp.com slash footballers. One more time, joinfightcamp.com slash footballers. And Foot Clan, join us and kicking off this NFL season with DraftKings. They are the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. I was in DraftKings all morning long. We are going head to head to head tomorrow on tomorrow's episode in DraftKings. And right now, if you have not played on DraftKings before, if you're a new customer, you can get a free shot 
at a $1 million top prize with your first deposit by signing up using our code BALLERS. You want to get in on the action now. It's simple. You just pick a lineup, stay under the salary cap, and see how your team stacks up against the competition. I know we've had a lot of Footland listeners in the past have great success so you can feel the action like never before. Download the DraftKings app now. Use the code BALLERS. This week, new customers get a free shot at $1 million top prize and compete for millions in prizes across all the contests. Enter code BALLERS for that free shot at $1 million. Code BALLERS at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. The Pittsburgh Steelers take on the Buffalo Bills in Buffalo this DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Bills minus six and a half. Over-under is 48.5, um, which I think is a little higher than I expected in this game. Implied point total for Buffalo is almost 28, and for Pittsburgh, it's 21. Uh, this is a rematch from week 14 last year. Buffalo won 26 to 15, uh, which would have been the under. Yeah, and also, would is as a reminder, that's when the Steelers started imploding at the end of last year. Yeah, I think some people forget that they were undefeated through, what, 11 weeks last year? Correct. Um, you know, for fantasy purposes in this game, how do we feel about... How do we feel about the quarterback position? How do we feel about Josh Allen himself? Oh, excellent. That I was, mean... How do I feel? Uh, okay. <laughs> I mean, you just start Josh Allen each and every week. Yes. Yeah. This isn't a. You don't draft a quarterback in the fourth round, and you're like, mm, should I play him week one? Well, let's talk about it for dynasty. You purposes, saddled up. Though. You know, people have multi quarterback situations. I'm. I have to stare down Tom Brady and Josh Allen in a league. Yeah, I'm gonna go Brady, I guess. Again, that's an easy. That's how I ended last year. Let's let's just make the wrong <laughs> choice again to start the year. But you have confidence that he'll do enough at home with the line I, the way it is. I do, and. Buffalo is – they're going to throw. That's, this is how they're going to attack the Pittsburgh Steelers. I am not playing either of the Buffalo Bills running backs uh, because I think that it's just going to be nonstop throwing. You you can't run against Pittsburgh, and Buffalo doesn't have a strong running game. So that they're just going to spread it out like they did. Uh, of course, you're playing Stephon Diggs. Like Manny Sanders is – Sort of interesting to me in this matchup. I, I see. I'm out on all three of the other options outside of Diggs. Like, I'm as well. Uh, you know, you just need to scroll on Twitter and you're going to have Gabriel Davis hype. Cole Beasley's still heavily involved. He's, in very, a, he's, a, he's a safe PPR play. Who is? Cole Beasley. Yeah, and so at that point in time, am I starting a third or fourth option for the Buffalo passing game against Pittsburgh? Uh, I don't think I am. I mean, they were 10th against fantasy wide receivers last year. I'd like to – this is a let it shake out to see what the depth chart looks like sure. for Buffalo for me. Yeah, I agree, especially between Emmanuel Sanders, who's been dealing with a foot problem, and Gabriel Davis, who is the the new hotness who does not necessarily even have the job. So, yeah, you, you've got to wait and see what the snap counts look, but look like between those guys. Um, this is not a great defensive, uh, you know, a matchup. So I'm pretty much looking at, obviously, Diggs and Allen. They're locked in. Cole Beasley and PPR, and then the other side of the ball, this is where it gets a little bit more interesting because I'm less afraid right. of the Bills' defense, even at home, um, than I am against the Steelers' defense. You're starting Najee. That's exciting. You drafted yes. him. Um, but I think the questions come up, and this is this is one of the reasons why I haven't drafted a lot of Deontay Johnson, Chase Claypool, or Juju Smith-Schuster is because every single week, matchup does not really determine. It's like, who is it? Yeah, I mean, on the road in week one, I would probably try my best to get somebody else into my lineup if I had Claypool or Juju. I'm I'm confident with the the volume, the target volume for Deontay week in and week out. He's not really going to be a matchup decision for me this year. But otherwise, like I'm pro I'm not trying to play Big Ben on the road. I mean, you look at last year; it was not a great year for Big Ben in general. But the the handful of top twelve games. Most of those happened at home where he finished at three and five. Those were at home. Um, Buffalo I, was the, the, the benching game for Deontay last year. Right. And, um, you know, Buffalo's defense, it's, it's pretty stout, especially in the secondary. So there'd be question marks for me about opportunity for Claypool and Juju to do enough. That's how I see it. I wouldn't play Big Ben either. 
Yeah, I, I, I would say the only other passing. I, I think you laid that out exactly how I view it. If you can pivot from Claypool or, or Juju to see what happens, you're, you're fine. Play Deontay. But I would put the line at two and a half uh, touchdowns for Pat Fryermuth. Ooh, oh. Muth, Muth is loose. The Muth is loose Goodness on the field. <laughs> uh, Antonio, it so bad. Antonio Brown or Chase Claypool. It, it, uh, sorry, <laughs> it is so much worse to say yes. than even to hear. When it you, feels it terrible. It feels wrong. When you, you know, go ahead, say it with Everybody, us at home. Yeah. Uh, the Muth is loose. <laughs> just doesn't. In your mouth, if it just feels yeah, weird. Yeah, I'm doing something wrong here. Um, okay, continue. Yeah, what you're doing is you're saying the Muth is loose. <laughs> That's what you're doing wrong. But, but to hear like it, it sounds bad. To say it, it Feels it terrible. sounds like you're, you know, did you ever do the thing where you oh, hold, say you, apple? You just hold your tongue and try to say apple? Oh, I haven't. I wouldn't recommend you doing that. I wouldn't apple. do it right now. <laughs> um, Antonio Brown or Chase Claypool? It's Antonio AB, Antonio right? Brown, yeah. Corey Davis or Chase Claypool? Corey Davis is... Against Carolina. Yeah. Ooh, that one is tough. I think the higher upside is with Claypool, but the higher volume, yeah. and, you know, if, if I'm uh, projected... To win the matchup, and I want to go play it safe, I would go Corey Davis. Debo at Detroit or Chase Claypool? Uh, I won't go Debo, so Chase. You won't? Wait, you just, wow. you're just against him? <clears throat> yeah, just Is this an IU That's thing? So, it's funny. No. We, t we have this debate about me not liking your players. You won't even start Debo. I like Brandon IU. This has nothing to do with uh, – this is literally just Debo's injury history where I'm always afraid – you're going to get a couple of snaps. Obviously, the matchup is great. Ayuk Debo would be the should, one to worry about on that in this game. Debo genuinely should. You're just saying because he's had a more recent injury. Yeah, like he was he was injured like last week, and he would be the re-injury risk in this mm. game. And those are some those are words you want to say out loud. <laughs> re-injury risk. That, that Debo is not the injury <laughs> risk in this game. Well, I think if you had to pick one person to be a re-injury risk, it would be Ayuk. Mm. Uh, does, does, Wasn't it a hamstring does for Dra I don't remember. Does DraftKings Sportsbook have injury props? Oh, here? gosh. No, please yeah, it don't. Was Andy. Yeah, it was a hamstring. Yeah. Oh, man. You're just, you're just begging for pain. I know. Uh, the Minnesota Vikings take on the Cincinnati Bengals in Cincinnati. It's Vikings minus three on the road, over-unders 47 points. Personally, I am smashing the Vikings minus three in this game. Uh, they are one of my... 2021 surprise teams. I think they can win the division. And Cincinnati is, I mean, just it's narrative street, right? But Joe Burrow off of the injury, Jamar Chase, first game in the NFL, which by the way, he's come out and said that oh, it's boy. harder to catch the NFL ball because it doesn't have the white stripes. So it's harder to see. It's a little what, bigger. Like the band? Uh, it doesn't have the white stripes on the ball. Sorry. One. Yeah, that one was oh. real bad. Um, you got a one for that joke. Yeah, and a so zero. You can't give a zero to a joke because it existed. It was a, that joke <laughs> was bad because it distracted from the conversation in a way that, that was not better. funny. Um, no, I mean the Cincinnati. I you're gonna need to see. Like I'm not gonna play anybody with confidence on Cincinnati outside of Joe Mixon. I would agree that H with the confidence Higgins? side, no. Um, not with confidence. It, it, I right. think Tyler Boyd might have the better week of the three wide receivers. Yeah, I, 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 I'm fine starting uh, T. Higgins in a PPR. Tyler Boyd is pretty much one of those Jarvis Landry types where every single or Cole Beasley, it, it, the matchup is really doesn't matter. Good matchup, bad matchup. Those are guys in a full PPR league you can throw in for a couple of points. They're going to be fine. They're not going to be great. Um, Higgins is who I would throw out if you wanted to take a shot in this matchup. The Vikings were obviously a very great defense to play against last year as far as them they were not good. I expect them to be better. This is one where I'm not targeting last year's metrics and saying, ooh, Minnesota's secondary sucks. Obviously, they brought in Patrick Peterson, uh, made some upgrades all over the defense. So I expect them to be um, far, far better. And I would agree with you, Andy. This is a game where I think it's lining up well for the Minnesota Vikings. We do have a start of the week in this game we'll get to. You'd start both wide receivers for the Vikings in this one on the road. Yes. You start Dalvin Cook, and I love Kirk Cousins this week. Uh, from week 10 on last year, he was the quarterback three. Jefferson is a an elite talent, an elite deep threat, big play. You know, he can turn a mediocre Kirk Cousins game into a great one on one play. So uh, I like Kirk in this matchup despite it being on the road. And then if you, if you need to go deep shot, 
Yes. At the tight end position. Please, yes, please go where you think. I think you're Tyler going. Conklin. Conk. Conk. Yes. Conk. I, I would, if you didn't say it, I was going to say it. Over the final <sighs> four games, Tyler Conklin started to produce and with, produce pronounced at, with an Onklin. <laughs> produced at a similar similar level to Irv Smith, who was a lot of people's favorite breakout and sleeper tight end of the year. And Irv Smith is out for the season with the meniscus problem. Conklin, if you are if you're playing the game of I just hope my tight end catches a touchdown. I think that Tyler Conklin this week is in that category. Last year, the Bengals, 26th against uh, the tight end position. And that, the, yeah, the the matchup is great, and that's why Chris Herndon's going to have himself a game. No, he's not. Mm. Chris the, the guy who just got added to the team? Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. I think he will be more involved than you two think. I don't think this is going to be the Tyler Conklin tight end show. Well, but that's, we're saying he's sneaky. We're not saying it's the show. I believe we said like this if you need a, a last, like a last ditch. This is like a public access show. Okay, but in in reality, it's not, it's not available in many <laughs> markets. Local markets may vary, but sure. I guess my point is, you know, you, assuming a twelve team league, I think you and Mike should make a uh, Conklin versus. Oh, let's Herndon put it on the board, water bed. just for fun, <laughs> just to get it started. Yeah. Waterbed. If you don't know what the waterbed is, we have a video that's going to be coming out pretty soon that uh, highlights our draft, like our League of Record draft, where the last place person has to get a punishment. Mm -hmm. So you'll get to see that. But Conklin versus Herndon mm. week one. I'm, I'm, pl I'm, I'm uh, leaning on the free from Adam Gase narrative forever. Sure. And I'm um, leaning on... Sh shouting conk oh. is very fun. Thought you were going to say statistics no, and history and things like that. I'm <laughs> guessing Shut that your mouth. you're not applying the Adam Gaze philosophy to Lev Bell on the Ravens. That is correct okay. because he was um, washed well before Adam Gaze. All right. Uh, the 49ers take on the Detroit Lions in Detroit. DraftKings Sportsbook line here, 49ers minus 7.5, over under a 44.5. Implied point total, 26 for the 49ers, 18 and a half for Detroit. Uh, boy, do I love this game if I'm playing a player on the San Francisco 49ers. Oh. <laughs> Last year, the Lions were 32nd against fantasy quarterbacks, 32nd against fantasy running backs, 31st against fantasy wide receivers. I do expect them to be improved. I think they're going to get better this year. In my bold predictions article, I have them winning more games than people expect. However... They're not going to be able to stop the well-oiled rushing attack of the 49ers in this one. Uh, Raheem Mostert, we're going to yes. talk about him soon. Yeah, but I love him in DFS this week. And Trey Sermon is interesting because he's going to get to make his debut against a porous run defense that you know is going to have to prove it before I believe. Yeah, I mean, I on I have an unfortunate situation on you know I'm I'm in the process of tearing down a dynasty to to rebuild it, and so I am starting both Raheem Mostert and Trey Sermon. But <laughs> thankfully, this it, matchup says that could work out for could. you. Um, you know, when I, when I look at the the Detroit side of the ball, I'm a little worried about almost everybody, and that that extends even to. A guy I'm madly in love with this year, one of the, you know, an unofficial my guy, if you will. TJ Hawkinson, I expect to have a great year to be the the center of this offense, but this matchup is really, really bad. I mean, the San Francisco 49ers were the most difficult matchup for tight ends. They're practicing against George Kittle. They gave up six points a game last year to the tight end position, um, and I think their defense has improved over last year, just personnel-wise, so... But are you – I mean, there's no way you're benching you're not, Hawkinson, No, right? you're not benching Hawkinson. I think he's still going to get, you know, six, seven, eight targets, five, six receptions, which is great for a tight end. But he is uh, – you know, we talked about Ezekiel Elliott being a week two target. Um, if TJ Hawkinson comes out and lays a stinker, I'm not going to be off of him based on him not showing up against a really good defense at playing So tight you're end. prepared for the Kyle Pitts amazing week one TJ Hawkinson disastrous week one i am fully mentally prepared yes i don't think you are not he's mentally not emotionally prepared <laughs> right he's yeah. mentally ah, prepared. Okay. thank you Andy. he acknowledges the fact that it could happen um but yeah he'll he'll be a ball um i'm what already about, a ball what about jerry 
What about Jared Goff? You ready to start him against San Francisco? Oh, no, thank you. No, thank you. Quarterback 28 on the week. DeAndre Swift and Jamal Williams, it's kind of a mess there, too. Great run defense for the 49ers, and Swift is coming off the injury. I'm more, and, I'm more confident for Swift if you're in a PPR league. I agree. And the the wide receiver room, like, I don't know if you've looked at the depth chart for Detroit. Like, it was already a mess, but, the de like, you have Tyrell Williams. Okay. He's probably kind of washed. And then you have potential players, right? Quintez Cephas, Amon Ross St. Brown. Amon Ross St. Brown is a starter on the depth chart. Is he? Yeah, but you know who? Oh, no. Uh, they just... <sighs> They added different names to this is a team they're doing their best like Texans of the NFC impression Ooh, okay. in picking up different players. Um Cephas is not listed as a starter. Why? Yeah, I mean I the only the only wide receiver I would even be willing to look at in a pinch is Tyrell Williams. I, I'm not a hundred percent convinced. Khalif Raymond is a starter. Yeah, I'm not a hundred percent convinced that Tyrell Williams is washed. I think he's gonna be one of those guys that's gonna be okay, a flex worthy starter on uh, you know, the majority of weeks, ne never special with this offense. And this isn't a good matchup to to try your hand. But outside of Tyrell Williams, there's just no one. And and even the running game in this matchup, given the fact that we didn't see DeAndre Swift for so long this offseason, and I don't think they're going to come in and let him just steal the show carry-wise. carry, carry -wise. I think it's going to be, at, at best, a 50-50 split. So he's someone where if I can pivot to a – a James Robinson or a Miles Sanders or Kareem Hunt. I'm I'm playing those guys over DeAndre Swift. Uh, yeah, and then Debo, you're starting him. You're starting recently injured Brandon Ayuk as well. Yes, you're you're starting all the 49ers. Yeah, you are. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo streaming. It's hard because the the matchup Two is quarterback is 100 percent there. Uh, I. I totally get the rationale for for playing Garoppolo, but the fact that there are the Trey Lance packages that freaks me out going into Week One that they might get to the goal line where you're like, oh sweet, Garoppolo's got 60 passing yards on this drive. Trey Lance comes in, runs a read option at the goal line, and you are hosed. Well, you think he's going to be active in Week One? I do. I, he's I, he's throwing at practice. So it, I don't know with the if, left hand or the right. Oh, if no. Trey Lance is inactive because of the the finger injury for week yeah. one, sure. Then then desperation uh, quarterback two Jimmy Garoppolo completely play. agree that that Garoppolo would actually be a, a a good play. But if he's active, I mean, it can happen anywhere on the field because yeah. they could put in Lance for a package where he throws a fifty yard touchdown. And even though Jimmy Garoppolo is playing fantastic. Those points are siphoned away. So yeah, watch, watch if Trey Lance is active. We're obviously not playing. Trey Lance. Cardinals yeah, at Tennessee. DraftKings Sportsbook line here. Titans minus three over unders. 52 and a half. That's not bad. 28 for the Titans, 25 for the Cardinals. Um, Tennessee, their games hit the over 73% of the time last year. So um, the doubt that happened in fantasy for Ryan Tannehill persisted in the betting lines. But, uh, you know, this is going to be a shootout game in, in Tennessee. I don't think the Cardinals secondary can hold up against Julio and A.J. Brown on the road. I don't think they have one. Um, they're sec they don't have a secondary? Correct. I no. mean, I, uh, I'll, I'll – It's a tertiary, yeah. I'll spoil tomorrow's um, – It's pronounced turkey <laughs> Thank you. Um, tomorrow's uh, DraftKings segment, but I've, I'm forcing A.J. Brown into my lineup because – See, I've done that with Julio. Uh, sure, Julio, A.J. Brown, Ryan Tannehill. Th I mean, I don't think that the Cardinals can stop those weapons. Now, the, the other side of the coin is, I mean, the reason this game line is so close is the fact that Titans' defense was awful last year. I mean, 30th uh, in the league, giving up 36.2 fantasy points per game to opposing wide receivers. They're going to face DeAndre Hopkins and A.J. Green and Rondale Moore and Christian Kirk. Uh, it's going to be, like, I'm not sitting Cardinal players in this game just because I have Tennessee winning it. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I mean, it's an offense that plays fast. You've got Kyler Murray at the helm. I don't expect the Titans' defense to be as porous as it was last year. Last year, it was it was terrible. They made a lot of improvements, or at the very least, they invested their resources this off season towards the defensive side of the ball. I do think they still have a pretty bad secondary. Um, Ky Kyler Murray, you're going to play. Hopkins, you're going to play. I'm not yet touching the other receiving options until I see what the heck happens on the field. Yeah, I mean, I'd play A.J. Green if it was A.J. versus Emmanuel Sanders this week, if I had that decision, deeper league, multi-wide receiver league. 
uh, because I know he's going to start against the bad secondary. But what are you doing with the running backs uh, on the Cardinal side of the ball? I'm playing Chase Edmonds. Uh, I drafted him to be a starter. And this isn't the type of matchup where I'm willing to put James Conner in. It, it, you, He was fine to to speculate and take him at his ADP and find out week one. But this is – I mean, the – the Cardinals are on the road. They're they're the underdog. Like this isn't uh, where you can project that the Cardinals are going to beat up on the Titans. And then either way, uh, James Conner gets in and he gets to clean up at the end or something like that. So Conner is just sit and wait and find yeah, out. Yeah, Conner's a touchdown guy. That's where you're going to get your right. fantasy heyday on the on his good weeks. And while he, I mean, any week you could get a touchdown. It, it the the Let metrics it, that project touchdowns for running backs aren't lining up for him this week. Well, the Cardinals added an all-pro center to this offensive line, and the, the Titans were pretty bad against the run last year. So I am very excited to watch and see mm -hmm. what happens with Connor and Edmonds in this matchup. Yes. I, uh, I would agree. The Cardinals are a team that, for fantasy purposes, you need to watch this game because how Rondale Moore is used and how yes. these running backs are used, yes. that my eyes are going to be all over that. Um, that being said, I, I'm in a dark place with my Arizona Cardinals right now. Yeah. yeah, I just, <laughs> my, my, I have no optimism this year. My dad, I just they're they, they're gonna suck. Like we, we talk Cardinals all the time, and my dad he had called me up. He's like, "What's your expectation for uh for this weekend?" I was like, "A loss." <laughs> I just, you know what? It, you, we rarely would want to look at the preseason, right, and say, "I'm gonna draw a conclusion." Right? It's vanilla offense. Yeah. It was so bad. That it made me just go from optimism and hope that Cliff would figure it out, Cliff Kingsbury, head coach of the Cardinals, to he's not going to figure it out. I, that's where I got to. Where it was like it looked so bad in the preseason with the starting offense that I'm like, oh, this is the same pedestrian play calling from a pedestrian coach. If you get points for three and out Ooh. against the Cardinals, then you might want to start the Titans. All right. Let's at least do one more matchup here before we get into our starts of the week. The Seahawks heading to Indianapolis, taking on the Colts. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Seahawks minus two and a half. Over under is 50. Okay. So the okay. Seahawks are road favorites in this game. Yeah, I mean. I can see that. Oh, I can definitely see it. I Oh, I can see something else too. I don't know if my drop is even ready for me. Um. Well, while you prepare that thought my worry here uh for the indianapolis Colts side is simply the timeline of carson wentz um i know he's been back he's been practicing he's been practicing in a red shirt he has not been playing nfl football right and the timeline for his and quentin nelson's you know re recovery from that surgery is like they're on the early side and and this sunday they could absolutely come out and look, they're just healthy. They're ready. They've been at practice and they're good to go. But there's two really important players that they both of those things have to go right for the Colts. That's my worry with this game is is those two players. But you seem unworried. Am I well, correct, Andy? I yeah, I mean I like the Colts in this game. I can't push my button, but I like the Colts. Someone push the button. Andy's almost upset of the week. Yeah, I will take the Colts at home in this game. Um, I will take Carson Wentz in his debut. This is a, a fabulous defense that the Colts have. And week one, Seattle traveling, new offensive coordinator, feeling your way around uh, in, a, in an environment that's going to be hostile. I, I'm going to go with the Colts. Now let's talk fantasy. Jonathan Taylor, you're starting him. Chris Carson, you drafted him. You got to start him in this game, although the matchup isn't outstanding. Um, Metcalf and Lockett, they're easy starts. Mm -hmm. So, you know, where are your decisions? Probably at the wide receiver position for the Colts, where Michael Pittman, Zach Pascal, yep. Paris Campbell, uh, maybe even the tight end position, looking for value from Wiley Cox. Yeah, my, Michael Pittman is the biggest question to me because he was a uh, double-digit draft pick, so you certainly drafted other starters in front of Pittman. But this matchup is juicy. The Seattle Seahawks were involved in many shootouts last year, 27th against fantasy wide receivers, giving up nearly 35 points a game. This is a matchup where I'm very interested to play Michael Pittman as a, like, uh, it's like a flex type. 
I, I, w- I would agree. He's the perfect type of player out there where you want to wait too long. You want to be proven before mm-hmm. you get the results. But the reality is, if you drafted Pittman and, and you've got a difficult situation, I, I would put him in my lineup. If if I'm considering Pittman, if he's in that conversation where I'm like, oh, this is this could go either way. I got a juicy one for you. Okay. Michael Pittman or Kenny Galladay. Perfect example. I, I think I would go with Michael Pittman. I think he, I would too. Kenny Galladay, you know, the injury is is scary and the matchup um, is which terrible. Which one makes me have to watch Daniel Jones less? Right, uh, exactly. Pittman. So Pittman. is that is that in uh, point in Michael Pittman's favor? It is. Okay. Then okay. good point. Then good point. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think Pittman is there. The another thing, you know, we we talk a lot this week about things we're going to be keeping our eyes on, the, regardless of how the fantasy outcome is, and it's Jack Doyle, Mo Ali Cox. Yes, it's Gigantor versus oh. Baby Hands, and seeing come on, I, Gigantor. I I think you know Carson Wentz. He's got a history of using the tight ends. I want to see the routes run from these two guys, and mm-hmm. who's more involved? Because I do think that there is value in this tight end room, and I am a hundred percent unsure of which. If if Jack Doyle comes out and has all the targets, and Mo Alley Cox gets one target, I wouldn't be surprised. I want it to be the other way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want it to be uh, Gigantor. Yes. It's important. Don't we have that drop too? Somewhere. Somewhere. It's Gigantor. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Starts of the week. Our first starts of the week segment for 2021. Well, let's begin at the quarterback position because we talked about this matchup. I'll kick it off. Ryan Tannehill against the Arizona secondary or lack thereof. Malcolm Butler oh, retired. Man. Patrick Peterson is gone. Uh, look, they have Buda Baker. They have some linebackers that can run, but you've got nobody on the outside to slow down the very explosive tandem. Julio Jones. Agreed. A.J. Brown. Maybe you mix in a little Ferkser for fun. But Ryan Tannehill is going to have a game in week one, so I I absolutely love him. Yeah, I, I think he is a, a great start. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I, I love Jalen Hurts this week, another game we covered on today's episode. I mean, in four starts last year, his rushing lines were outstanding, 100 yards, 63, 69, very nice, and 34 yards um, on the ground. And you saw this with Taysom Hill last year in two games versus Atlanta. He had 84 rushing yards, two rushing touchdowns, and fantasy finishes of quarterback four and quarterback eight. Atlanta's just bad. I mean, their, their defense is bad. They gave up the most passing yards, the most quarterback fantasy points, the most wide receiver fantasy points. This is a matchup we talked about. You want your pieces in. Jalen Hurts gets off to a strong start with his new rookie in tow. And I will take the other quarterback in that game. If you're looking to – maybe your quarterback uh, draft didn't go as you wanted it to. Matt Ryan against the Philadelphia Eagles is in play here. The, the Eagles – Coming into the season, the 25th best uh, ranked secondary per uh, per pro football focus, the high implied team total for the Falcons, the, the potential for this to really turn into an offensive shootout. Matt Ryan as a QB2, a strong QB2 play or a streaming option. At the running back position, I'm going with the Gus Bus against the Las Vegas Raiders in week one. And I love it. Yeah, I mean – it's time. Beep, beep. It's t- well, yeah. Maybe he gets <laughs> maybe he gets a more intimidating horn after a nice week one. But uh, look, this team is going to have to lean on Gus Edwards as their primary ball carrier for the duration of the year. They'll mix in Tyson Williams and and other backs, but it's going to be Gus. He's ready for the challenge. He's going to be put in the position to succeed that only Lamar Jackson can do for you when he is a you know a dual threat quarterback. So I think week one is a very, very good week for Gus. Yeah, I'm, I'm going with Raheem Mostert oh, baby. against Detroit for my start of the week at running back. Raheem Mostert, he's not the new hotness. Trey Sermon is the new hotness. He fell in drafts. There was questions about the back injury that really was never there. Um, and the matchup is great. We talked about it. According to Football Outsiders, Detroit ranked dead last in defensive DVOA last year. They gave up the fifth most rushing yards in 2020. And Mostert is healthy, and he's going to have a f- phenomenal week. I I'm, love it. I'm going with Kareem Hunt. Uh, the, oh, my. The Cleveland Browns are taking on the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, DK has that over-under at 54 the last time I had looked at it. And Kareem Hunt 
in losses, uh, which the, the Chiefs are heavy favorites in this one, Kareem Hunt has performed better than, than Nicholas Chubb when they lose. <laughs> and look, the Chiefs allowed the most running back receptions over the final four weeks of last year. I was just laughing at the very formal pronunciation of Nicholas Chubb. I want to give the man his due. Right. That's nice. Respect the parents Jolly as well. old. It feels like his Saint last Nicholas, name should be longer if you call him Nicholas. You Ni know what I mean? Nicholas Chubb. Chubster. <laughs> Chubster. <laughs> um, Mike, let, let me just say something. I, 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 I like the call on Kareem Hunt as a start of the week um, the, the, for all the reasons you outlaid, but I, I just want to flex for a second. Um, since we we run a team together. Yes, we um, do. And we've got Kareem Hunt, so obviously we got to start him, right? Okay. Would, we, would you start him over Raheem Mostert? No, I'd play Mostert. No. How about Derek start Henry? Raheem Hunt. <laughs> He's going to be on our bench our start of the week. That's right. We're champs in you're, that league. Get bodied, everyone out there in that league. flexing our roster? Yeah, darn right I am. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Antonio Brown is my wide receiver start of the week. Uh, oh, man, I love it, too. Takes on Dallas tonight. Ranked second among all wide receivers in percentage of routes targeted, which was one of our never not working segments. Mm -hmm. And Bruce Arians, Tom Brady, Given him a vote of confidence recently. He is one of several players that you guys have persuaded me on over the course of the offseason where I truly believe that um, he's going to be a valuable piece of the offense based on the evidence before me and the arguments you guys have made. So he is my start of the week for week one because oh. he is somebody that you actually have to make a decision on. Right Where you drafted him, you have to decide, yes, is it him or is it uh, maybe a Devonta Smith, right? Like. That could be a decision for your team, and I would go A.B. Absolutely. Another player who fell really far in drafts for you know what he's been over the last several years is Adam Thielen, who I will absolutely lock in my lineup. He's against Cincinnati. Uh, the Cincinnati secondary is super weak. Eli Apple now on his fourth team should be in coverage. And while oh, we can man. have a Tyler Conklin versus Herndon water bet, the reality is with Irv Smith not there, Adam Thielen's going to be fine. He's probably going to get a touchdown this week, and I think he's a good start. I mean, the matchup couldn't be much nicer. And broadening that discussion on Thielen, there is no player that I have pursued more aggressively in the last week for season long than Adam Thielen because the the pendulum has swung so far. The Irv Smith news really matters. Um so I, I like that. Great start of the week. Mike, who do you have? I got Tyler Lockett. I'm look, Hot Lockett. He's a my guy, so why not fire him up in week one? If you had any concerns about playing Tyler Lockett, uh, to end the season, the Colts allowed the second most wide receiver receptions over those final four games. Kenny Moore, who uh, should be in coverage on Tyler Lockett. He, I fully expect him to play, but he got a little bit banged up uh, this week, so maybe he's entering the game not fully at 100%. 14 end zone targets last year. I like Tyler Lockett, and I'm not scared of the matchup. All right, my tight end start of the week is Atlanta's wide receiver, too. That would be Kyle Pitts, <laughs> the rookie tight end. Uh, Philadelphia is vulnerable at the position. We've talked about it in our breakdown. They gave up some huge games last year, including 15 for 183 and 1 to George Kittle. Kyle Pitts has wheels. He's going to get into space. He like only, literally. He, yeah, there, there's only one way that a man of that size can be that fast, and, it's, and he, he must is, have wheels in his feet. Yeah, he's a motorcycle. Um, no, he is. He's just – he only needs a few plays to have a big game, and I think the target count's actually going to be fairly high for him. They're going to put him into positions where uh, they move him around, they run him uh, you know, in motion, and you saw just from a couple preseason plays – you can get him the ball three or four yards down the field where a possession tight end would go down mm -hmm. and he can turn the corner and, um, you know, really validate being the highest drafted tight end in NFL history. Yeah, I, I think the yards after catch are going to be good for him this game. I mean, you get him on the weak side of the defense, roll him out, sneak him out there, and he could take something to the house. Um, my tight end, tight end start of the week is Logan Thomas. Um, recently we, we talked about it, but Curtis Samuel was quoted saying, ah, my groin. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I don't expect C uh, Curtis Samuel to play, um, Should which we put that on the record, Mr. Samuel, uh, it's already on groin index. <laughs> that is A C K K K K K exclamation point, exclamation point. <laughs> um, but you know, I, I think that that puts Logan Thomas as the second target. Uh, he becomes a very necessary player and the Los Angeles chargers tied for the fourth most touchdowns allowed to tight end last year including some monster games to Kelsey and Waller and the opposing starting tight ends versus the Los Angeles Chargers 
They had over six targets a game, so it's a little bit of bankable volume with high upside. I, I like Logan Thomas. hate this pick because you're so right, and I'm facing him in week one. Yeah. Al Borland and I going head-to-head. He keeps saying, Logan Thomas will be this year, last year's Logan Thomas, <laughs> which he's probably right about, at least for week one. Mike, why don't you close us out with – oh, why don't you go with one of my, my guys? I will do that. I'm going with Rams tight end Tyler Higby taking on the Chicago Bears. The Bears were allowing double-digit fantasy points to the tight end position on a per-game basis last year. Uh, the matchup is especially good for yards after catch, which the Chicago Bears uh, allowed a lot of those. And Tyler Higby – that's what he does. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% guaranteed boom, boom, kicker of the week. I choose to sit when I pee and I sit when I poo, but your team can withstand victories with the Falcons' Young Way Coup. So f- let the record show this podcast had two pee poo jokes. That was the foreshadowing I was talking about. Oh my goodness. Dean pees. <laughs> Any poos. So we kind of bookended the show with some f- sophistication. <laughs> some good pee pee poo poo jokes. <laughs> How's it make you feel, Brooksy? Uh, are you content? You're proud? With, you proud to you work prou- here? Are you proud to be employed by the fantasy footballers? <laughs> Not shocked at all. <laughs> Not shocked. Okay. Part of what you signed up for. Oh, yeah. They don't even know the conversations around the office, do they? <laughs> no. Thank goodness. Thank goodness for that. Um, <laughs> what what they also don't know is just, I mean, we, we had an hour-long show yesterday morning, and I don't know, eight seconds into hitting record, Jason was fighting for his life because he had to go to the bathroom. Oh, man. <laughs> I had a good PM after that show. <laughs> Uh, stay healthy now how do you how much do i pause to give our sponsors the appropriate lack of <laughs> contextual connection with that conversation separation of time. dot 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 <laughs> moment of silence and we want to close this thing out by thanking pristine oh, auction speaking of pristine oh man that bm uh, oh right? gosh <laughs> well so much for uh, that in the ads. let's go so much for that uh, they, they, you could buy a, a signed George Kittle jersey, fifty-seven dollars. Signed Dak Prescott jersey, sixty-eight dollars. Hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions. You can check them out at pristineauction.com. Use the code Ballers to get a ten dollar, a ten dollar <laughs> credit. Yeah, I'm, I'm lucky I didn't say Duke Prescott. Oh man! All right. Well, we've got another show tomorrow, the rest of the matchups. Looking forward to it, and enjoy the game tonight. It is football time. Football time. time. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.